second. Oh yeah, handling good for a solid rear axle car. I need better seats. was made last time to try and go into one of the viewers basically said hey can you go into a little bit more detail for any of us who are kind of new to this so I think what I'm going to try on this one is it's not going to be a complete how-to where I go each step of the instructions because I think Maxima Motorsports does a pretty good job of telling you more or less how to do it um, but when I get to parts that I think are going to be especially difficult or if you've never done this before um, you don't understand right away from reading the instructions, I'll kind of stop and just like key in on what that would be. Otherwise, I'll try and do a time lapse. So, you know, leave me some feedback. So right off the bat, when you get in the instructions, they're gonna talk about, um, step one, check the centering of the axle under the body by measuring the distance between the tire sidewall and the upper edge of the rear wheel well opening. So what they mean by that is get yourself a plumb bob. Um, you could make one of these out of some heavy washers. Um, you know, you don't need to buy one like I did, but, so anyways, you're gonna hang this down and basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna come over here and you're gonna hang it from the side of the fender, wait for it to stop moving, and then you're gonna pull a measurement. I'm gonna pull a measurement to the wheel um, instead of the tire. Uh, but basically you're gonna have your measurement tape go from here out to there. And then you're gonna take the same measurement over on the other side and write that down. And those are gonna be your baseline readings. And don't be surprised if the axle is moved, if you don't get the same measurement on both sides. Um, but trust me, you'll be able to fix that with the pan hard bar because you can center it underneath the car. As we get started here, uh, you do wanna make sure that you're working on a level work surface. I wouldn't recommend doing this on the dirt. Um, try and make sure you're you know, in a garage or a driveway that's fairly level. You will need multiple jack stands. I'll get into all of those details in a minute, um, but take your time, follow the instructions and make sure the car is totally level. So at this stage, you should have the car supported in six points. Um, if you look at the instructions, they want you to support it in the front off the key member, depending on whether you have a stock or tubular key member, they give you different options. They want you to support it in the back. Um, you can either do it depending on the height of your jack stands at the subframe connectors or just behind. I chose just behind just because that's what helped me get it level. And then you wanna get yourself a nice long level um, like this two foot that I have right here. And kind of like I mentioned, you wanna come in up on the rocker arms up under here boom put it up there it should be dead nuts level adjust the jack stands before you continue um, then you come up with your last set of jack stands so you will need six just jack up the rear end just a little couple few pumps um, put those under there to support the axle and now basically the weight of the car is supported and also the weight of the axle is supported now you're going to go ahead and remove the rear support wheels. the rear end undo each of the nuts here um, these are the top of your sh rear shocks. So undo those um, so you can eventually take these shocks out. You're gonna have to take obviously the padding out on each side. I kind of cracked mine in the process. So take your time. There are some clips that hold undo them in. Undo this. Obviously your rear end is still supported on the jack stands. Do not touch those, but just put a jack under here. Just to, just come up and touch it. Don't put any force. Undo this, the jack or the shock will fall out repeat on the other side. They, they are very specific in the instructions. Do not lower the rear end with the shocks out or you will damage the brake lines. And they mean these. Here's your parking brake cable. There's your brake lines. You will break them. So um, right now you can feel them, they're loose. But if you were to drop that down, you would pull that real taut and, and rip something. So right here, I'm just removing both the rear shocks. Uh, nothing super specific to note. Uh, make sure you do hold on to all the hardware so you don't lose it. 
Okay, here's the first issue that I ran into, pretty minor. It's just an order of operations thing. So um, they tell you to remove this bolt first, which attaches the driver's side lower rear shock mount. This is like a 13 16 so like a 21. If you have a 13 16 wrench, perfect. Um, most sizes stop at three quarters. So I've got a 13 16 socket, but you can't get it in here with the shock in the way. So for the lower control arm. So basically, um, the next step is to put a jack under here, undo this, slowly lower this down. Um, so I'm gonna do that first. That way I can get access to this. Otherwise, you know, if you got the tools, you can do it, but most people probably don't have a 13 16 wrench, just kind of awkward. Um, because of where I place the jack stands, I can get an adjustable wrench on here, but when I grab this side, it hits. So I'm gonna have to kind of go out of order. Um, but it's the same idea, so just go ahead, undo this, remove, take the spring out, then come back and come right. I really thought everything was going great. Uh, you'll see it here in a second. I start to scratch my head and I kind of run into uh, my next problem. All right, so the next issue. Um, I went to remove the lower control arm, but because I have a sway bar, as many of you probably will have, you can't do it this way because the opposing force of the sway bar doesn't let this control arm drop down independently of the other one. So if you have a sway bar, here's my trick. You're gonna need two jacks. You're gonna need to position both of those underneath each of the lower control arms. And basically what you're gonna do is, because the sway bar is there to prevent one with moving too much, you know, without the other moving. So basically get them under there, get the nuts loose, undo one a little bit and go to the other side, undo the other one. You gotta come back and forth, back and forth. Eventually, you'll be able to lower it down enough. Basically, but what you're doing is you're taking both lower control arms and letting them fall together because it won't let just one come down with the sway bar. The other option, of course, is remove your sway bar. If you don't have a sway bar, just skip this step. Step 14 is bound to give some people some trouble. If you just look at that and read that wording right there, Good luck trying to understand what they mean. So let me save you some trouble. First of all, this half inch by inch and a quarter, that's the gold one. You've got plenty of others to choose from. That's the gold one. The other thing they say is, I know you're all gonna be tempted to put a washer on first, but don't do it because it'll interfere with the shock. So basically what's gonna happen, I'll show you off the car first. Um, that's the hole right there that it mounts to. So what's gonna happen is this is gonna go through like so, you know, obviously bolt up to the car, but then the washer and then the lock nut, nothing underneath here. Otherwise it will and want to make sure that these holes align with the lower control arm holes on the car. So, and from what I've read, sometimes they don't, you got to take a file. And so let's, uh, let's just give it a shot real quick. See if I can do this with two hands. Oh, so that's where it's going. Basically they want you to grab it and it needs to go up in here like like so i'll put the bolt in and then i'll try and show you guys you know what's going on i don't think i'll be able to do it all with one hand order of operations was i put that large um, half inch by inch and a quarter bolt through rotated the black new bracket up installed this long new um, bolt Everything was able to fit. I had to finagle a little bit, but it fit. But then you got to torque that guy right there to 119 foot pounds and it sucks. And the best thing I can recommend to do is get yourself a breaker bar, half inch drive, 19 millimeter, put it on that side. Uh, if you have a helper, that's better. I was able to do it myself, but um, hold on to that. Then get yourself a torque wrench. Again, half inch drive, so you got some leverage. I wound up having to use a real long extension. If you didn't have, um, if you didn't have a sway bar, you could probably swing things out of the way easier, but because I have a sway bar and it's a Cobra, I had to use this to get myself out past the um, lower control arms and then use a 19 millimeter, either shallow or deep well uh, socket and then torque it to 119 foot pounds. I'm gonna take this uh, bolt back out, lower control arm bolt, jack that up into place. Don't put the springs in yet. Get the bolt back in so it's in place. I think they want you to remove the passenger side spring next, but mine's already removed. So simultaneously as I'm jacking up one side, let me, I'll need to be jacking up the other and I'll just go ahead and put those bolts back in. All 
All right, I know I said a minute ago to, if you had a sway bar, to remove both bolts and let the axle, uh, the lower control arms drop down as one. I'm gonna say don't do that. And the reason being, okay, you can, um, but there's a good chance when you do that, the alignment of the lower control arm bushings will shift. Basically the axle will kind of move in such a way that you can't, it's difficult to get the bolts back in. So um, I wound up using, let me see if I can find, hold on. Ugh. I wound up using these um, to get them back aligned, but it was relatively easy on the passenger side. Um, I just wiggled that around, hit the bolt through, tapped it with the hammer. Driver's side was a different story with the new bracket. And I wound up having to get a ratchet strap because what happened was I could jack the rear end up, but I couldn't get it forward to back aligned correctly. What I wound up doing is getting a ratchet strap and actually coming down here, grabbing around the top of the axle right here. And then um, I went back over, grabbed to the uh, spring perch right there and pulled it that way. I don't know whether you can see that or not. I had the camera turned away from me, but either ways, um, pulled it away and that was able to get this back this direction so I could get the bolt through, but it was tough. So um, certainly if you don't have a rear sway bar, this is gonna be a lot easier. Um, if you do, it's gonna be kind of tricky. That was the hardest part so far. Um, got the bolts back through. The next step is to raise um, the rear end up and get it both you know, uh, level this way and the, the control arms parallel to the ground. So. Uh, you want to go ahead, get your bolts in, just snug up the bolts. Your springs still aren't in yet. You just want to put the bolts through the lower control arms um, and then jack the rear end up from the bottom of the differential, get it level, and then uh, we'll go from there. So now you're going to want to go ahead and jack up the differential again. Make sure you got two identical jack stands um, or something to support the rear end with. And then you'll see me going back and forth from side to side with my level, just to make sure the lower control arms are perfectly parallel and uh, level with the ground. Man, this is a pain. Um, this is something where I highly stress, I think it's a good idea to have a helper. I don't. So um, what I did was you basically, you need to get, you need to get this mount up in there and you need to take measurements with the plumb bob from two different sides. The first side I already showed you, that was pretty simple. The second side is the same idea, except you go inboard. You can see where it's inboard of the control arm to the inboard side of the bracket, but you need it to be a quarter of an inch to five eighths of an inch larger. So basically I'm looking for a measurement between five and an eighth, five and a half. And this is where it gets difficult. If you don't have an extra set of hands, it is extremely hard to hold this thing in place. And they tell you to use clamps, but I'm here to tell you that it's so much larger that the clamps really don't work. So what I wound up doing was using two jacks and basically some wood. <laughs> it's pretty sketchy. And lifting it up to hold it in place because it's very crucial that the bottom of the bracket is touching the frame rail. And you're just gonna have to take my word for it because can't quite get my camera in there, but you can kind of see the bottom of the bracket is touching the frame rail. <sighs> then I took a little spray paint, spray painted around the holes so you could see. Quickly went in with a 3 8 of an inch drill bit and basically just made a witness mark for where the centers of my holes are going to be. Now I'll go ahead and drill those holes. So it's kind of a funky angle. I started out with a bit and then once I got the pilot hole drilled to about 3 8 of an inch, I switched to my step bit. I actually use two different ones. I use this one to get me up to half inch, and this is a little more aggressive to get me to five eighths. You're going to five eighths. And the reason you're doing that is basically these little suckers need to fit through, and they are trimmed to fit. So you slide them in, you use some calipers, you mark them, and you trim them to fit. So kind of funky stuff. So I decided to do this in two parts. And the reason being is it would be like a 40 minute video if I edited all the footage that I had. Um, and plus I really did this over the course of two days. You could do it, I guess in a day, but you'd be kind of rushing things and you wouldn't really get a ton of time to test the car. Um, so I decided to do it in two days. So I'm going to break this video into two parts. 
The second part will be the final install on the test. This is a good stopping point. At the end of the first day, I installed everything in place, um, just mocked the bracket up inside the car, got all the holes drilled. Those little pieces I showed you at the end had them trim to fit, slid those in, put the bolts in, and just held it there and just kind of sat back and uh, looked at my fine work. So I'll show you a picture here real quick of what that looked like all mocked up in place. I still got this uh, plumb bob there for trying to make sure all my measurements were exact. I probably checked it 15 times before it was over. So um, if you enjoyed this part, uh, please stay tuned. Like I said, I have everything installed, so I will be editing the second part of the video. Um, and the second part of the video, will get everything installed. I'll show you how to adjust everything at the very end. Um, some tricks for torquing, some of the higher torque value bolts, and then finally we'll get it on the road and test it. Uh, big hint, it's awesome, but um, stay tuned for the next video. If you haven't already, please uh, go ahead and subscribe. If you have comments or questions, please leave them. I love reading your comments and I wish I could get back to you. So enjoy your Halloween. Have a good rest of your weekend.